Well, we're still talking about the reproductive system, and now we're going to be focusing in on the female reproductive system. Um, as I said just in the last uh, video, uh, the ovary um, produces eggs, but it also produces hormones. Uh, let's look at this image here, okay? This image. Now, uh, at no given moment in a woman's life would her ovary look like that one. This is kind of like a time lapse of what happens over the course of a month in an individual ovary. So at the beginning, let's, let's just imagine from the point of view of this ovary that uh, last month this woman did not get pregnant. And so the ovary is like, okay, let's try again. So the first thing that's going to happen is when, uh, when hormones change to tell the ovary that pregnancy isn't happening this month, and we'll get to that, then there will be one of these little primordial follicles that'll win the kind of a chemical arm wrestling match that allows it to become the next one to become an egg and be ovulated, okay? So she won, and, and over the course of the next two weeks, she is going to grow into a mature egg that's ready to be ovulated, sent out into the world, hopefully to get fertilized. And in that time, I'd like you to notice that at the beginning of the month, she has a few cells around her. They've depicted them as pink. And those few cells around her, they're going to start multiplying. And right now, each one of those cells is very busy, mostly making estrogen, okay? These cells are making estrogen. Some progesterone, but mostly estrogen, right? Now, these cells, they will multiply. So now there's more of them, so they're making more estrogen. And there's more of them, they're making more estrogen. And then there's a ton of them. And at a certain point, they will also start to secrete a liquid. And this little structure, this mature follicle, they call it a graphene follicle, it'll become uh, what looks a lot like a water blister. I don't know if you've ever got a water blister like on your thumb or your foot or your heel from hiking or something like that, um, but it looks like that. And now it's ready to be ovulated. Okay, here's, here's a tricky thing. So at, a, at the moment of ovulation, and that, that ovulation is triggered by a hormone called luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary, okay? So that has caused the egg to go on her journey. I'd like you to notice that the egg, that's her there in the, oops, that's her there in the center. How did I lose my laser pointer? That's her there in the center. She's surrounded by a lot of these little pink cells. You know, you can kind of think of those as her posse. They've been with her as she became the star that she is, and now they're going on her journey with her. But left behind are a lot of the cells that were busy making estrogen, right? So before I go further, first two weeks, of like a monthly kind of cycle of the female reproductive system. And in the middle, about in the middle, is the moment of ovulation. Now here's the thing. This little girl, she goes on her journey to maybe become fertilized. That little girl, the ovum, the egg, she has got 24 hours to find Mr. Right sperm or die. Wow, that is really a biological clock. 24 hours to get fertilized or die. And uh, all of her friends around her are really rooting for her. The thing is that the ovary will not know what has happened for more than a week. It'll take more than a week before the ovary knows if a pregnancy has happened or not. However, it's, it's really important for the ovary to keep on doing things that are designed to prepare the uterus for the arrival of a pregnancy, right? Let's go back here. So here we are, day of ovulation. It's gonna be another week before that pregnancy arrives in the uterus. And for the whole time, and actually a couple of days after that, the woman's body does not know 
if fertilization has happened or not. But it's important for the ovary and these cells that are left behind to keep on preparing the uterus for the arrival of a pregnancy, right? <clears throat> so, so these pink cells that got left behind, they were part of the graphene follicle. Now they're going to change. They're like, okay, we sent our girl on her way, fingers crossed, and we're, we're going to be sending out the hormones that will prepare the uterus, the endometrium, for the arrival of hopefully a successful pregnancy. And so these cells, they change their identity and they become this structure, the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum means yellow body. I guess it looks yellow uh, in a, a uterus if you look at it surgically. And this corpus luteum is still making estrogen, but now it starts making a lot of progesterone. And together, the estrogen and the progesterone are going to make that endometrial lining become thick and kind of juicy and ready for that pregnancy to arrive. Now, this corpus luteum is going to hang around for a while because she's patient. She's like, okay, we know it's going to take six to 10 days before we hear back and we're just going to keep doing our thing until we hear back. If they do hear back, then you got a pregnancy. We'll talk about what happens then later on. But if there was not a successful fertilization, if you don't have a pregnancy, if the corpus luteum does not hear back from that fertilized egg in like six to 10 days, then she gives up and she's like, oh, okay, well, we tried and turns into this other thing called a corpus albicans, which means a white body. I don't need you to know that. And that's actually just kind of like a little scar. And this would be like, okay, who gets to be next? And the whole thing starts over again, right? So that's what's going on in the ovary. Now, the ovary's job is to first make the egg, then ovulate the egg, then make hormones all along that are preparing this structure, the, this structure, the uterus, particularly the lining of the uterus called the endometrium, so that when a fertilized egg does arrive there, it will be ready to maintain a pregnancy, right? Good deal. So what we've just run through for the first time is known as a woman's, re is known as a woman's sexual cycle. And now in terms of physiology, we are often talk about it as four weeks or 28 days. The truth is it varies. It varies from woman to woman, and some women have a very predictable, oh, it's always going to be 28 days on the nose. And other women, sometimes it's 20, some days it's 30, you know, it can, it can vary, right? Uh, there, there is what is known as a hierarchy of control. We already talked about the hierarchy control um, when we were doing the endocrine system, and we learned that the hypothalamus is in charge of particularly some organs that make steroid hormones, right? Or steroid-like hormones. Um, so the hypothalamus is in charge. It talks to the pituitary and the pituitary talks to the ovaries or in, in the male system, uh, the testes. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Now, it will be the ovaries that make a hormone that are in charge of telling the uterus what to do. And, and why, why is this important? Remember, and well, actually, I've just barely referred to it, but the uterus, if it, on any given day, if I just put a perfectly healthy embryo and just throw it into someone's uterus, which would be rude, you sh really shouldn't do that. But if I did, it wouldn't have a successful pregnancy. Why? Because the lining of the uterus, the endometrium, most of the time, is not ready for a, an embryo to arrive. It's not properly prepared. That, that state of like a perfect endometrial lining that's ready for a pregnancy to arrive, that state, it's, it's a little bit risky in terms of the health of the uterus. 
So the way um, mammalian physiology works is uh, the mammal's body, and we're mammals, right, prepares the uterine lining to be perfect, you know, just for like about five or six days, right around the time that a pregnancy might arrive. And if it doesn't, the body gets rid of that one, throws it away, and starts over again. So every month there is a new endometrial lining. Well, the fact that we only have a perfect endometrial lining for a little bit of time means we really have to make sure that the uterus is ready when a fertilized egg would arrive, right? They've got to be synchronized. So isn't it smart that the ovaries, the ones that are making and kicking out the egg, that they are actually in charge of making sure that the uterus is ready at the right moment. Right? Now, let's go back to the image of the ovary. This period of time here, uh, that period of time is called the follicular phase because it is dominated by the developing ovarian follicle. Right? The next thing that happens is ovulation. And the second two weeks is called the luteal phase because it's dominated by the corpus luteum. Remember, this is not, this is not any particular day of an ovary. <clears throat> this is a whole month. This is day one, two, three, four, five, up to day 14. And this is day 14, back to 28. And then we start over again, right? So the first two weeks is going to be dominated by <clears throat> the maturing follicle. So it's called the follicular phase. And the second two weeks is dominated by the corpus luteum, so it's called the luteal phase. The ovarian follicle is basically making estrogen. The corpus luteum is making estrogen, but making tons of progesterone. So the follicular phase, that first two weeks, divided in the middle by ovulation, that is um, dominated by estrogen, and the second two weeks dominated by progesterone. First two weeks, the development of the ovarian follicle. Second two weeks, maintained by the corpus luteum. First two weeks, we'll talk about in more detail. When I get a picture, great. Okay, a picture. So here we've got everything going on. Here's a recap of what happened over the course of that month in the ovary. We get a growing follicle, growing follicle, graphene follicle, pop, ovulation. Then these cells left behind, they change, corpus luteum, corpus luteum. Then, oh, we didn't hear back. Mm, there's no pregnancy. Corpus luteum goes away. By the way, if there is a pregnancy, then the corpus luteum doesn't go away. The corpus luteum hangs out and maintains the uterine lining. So this particular sexual cycle is assuming that there was not a pregnancy, right? Now, uh, I don't have A and B from your textbook on here. We, we do have C and D. Let's look at D. So here we have estrogen levels and progesterone levels are low. When estrogen and progesterone levels drop suddenly, that's what kills off the lining of the uterus. Yeah, it kills it by what's called ischemia. I think I've got a picture of that in a second. Okay? And so low levels of estrogen and progesterone kill off the lining of the uterus and when the lining of the uterus, the endometrium, when it dies, it falls off, it comes out through the cervical canal, out through the vagina, and that is what is a woman's menstruation or period, okay? So the period is going to be these first five days or so of a woman's sexual cycle. But then the ovarian follicle starts growing and it starts making estrogen, making estrogen. Then it suddenly starts making lots of estrogen, and that peak of estrogen is going to cause the release of luteinizing hormone, LH, luteinizing hormone, from the anterior pituitary, and that triggers ovulation. A surge of luteinizing hormone triggers ovulation. After ovulation, then we get the formation of the corpus luteum. So look, lots and lots of progesterone starts getting made. And then the corpus luteum is like, I'm making progesterone. I'm making that endometrial lining perfect for my friend, the pregnancy to arrive, and it'll keep hanging out, waiting to hear back. I haven't heard. 
I haven't heard. Oh no, there was no pregnancy. And if there is no pregnancy, then the corpus luteum degenerates and that causes a drop in estrogen, a drop in progesterone that kills the old endometrial lining and then you get another period, okay? Um, yeah, let's, let's do this one last thing before I stop this video. So now let's look at what's happening on the lining of the uterus, the endometrium. I told you that this drop in estrogen and progesterone, it causes the lining of the endometrium to die. That's so sad. And that dead endometrium, it is going to end up coming out of the vagina in these first five days or so, right? And then we start getting the follicle making estrogen that causes these cells to multiply, lots and lots more cells. Now the endometrium is getting thick again, okay? But still not ready for the pregnancy to arrive. Now we need the, progest the progesterone that is made by the corpus luteum. That makes the endometrial lining have lots of glandular secretions. So first it gets thicker, then it gets thicker and juicier. And right here, oh, wouldn't it be great if that's exactly when the, estro when the pregnancy would arrive? And usually that's when it does arrive. Um, if it does, it'll tunnel in. And if a pregnancy arrives, it sends out a signal to the corpus luteum saying, yay, we made it. And then if we made it, then the corpus luteum does not go away, right? But in this case, there was no pregnancy, so there was no signal, so the corpus luteum goes away and the endometrial lining dies, right? We will pick up here at the beginning of the next video.